Welcome once again to our geography class. We're going to continue with planes. But before that, let us look at what we did previously. In our previous lesson, we looked at planes. What planes are, the types of planes, and we tried to explain the types of planes that we have. We said planes are extensive places of lowlands, either with a level or undulating surface. Remember I explained to you that an undulating surface means a rolling surface. That means it may not be flat and as smooth as you may want it, but sometimes there may be some bumps on the land. We also talked about the types of planes where we said the type of planes are based on how they are formed. And based on these formation, we have three forms of planes. We have the structural planes, the erosional planes, and the depositional planes. We discussed the structural planes where we said they are formed when there is an upliftment of an area or a depression of a place. So when there is an upliftment of a place and the place is very extensive, flat or undulating, it is known as a structural plane. And sometimes too, there may be depressions. So when there is a depression and still we get a flat land or an undulating surface, which is very extensive or large, it is termed as structural plane. Remember, they are formed as a result of tectonic movement. Then we also discuss the erosional planes, where we said they are planes formed as a result of the agents of erosion. As I now we already know the agents of erosion, rain, rivers, wind, etc. We said we have two main types of erosional planes, that is the penny planes and the pedi planes. With the penny planes, they are formed by river movement or ice. And with the pedi planes, they are lowlands formed as a result of wind movement. So whilst penny planes are formed as a result of river or ice erosion, which smoothes part of all the irregularities of the earth surface, the pedi planes are formed when wind does the job. Then we talked about the positional planes. These are planes formed as a result of deposition. That is when there is transportation. When we talk about transportation, it may be by wind, by ice, or by water, or even ocean waves. When these bodies transport materials and deposit these materials, forming an extensive lowland, they are known as depositional planes. We looked at some of them which we are going to continue today. We talked about the alluvial plane, that is, planes formed when a river takes materials from the upper course and deposits them at the lower course. They form what we call alluvial planes. We also talked about flood planes, that these are planes formed as a result of flooding. That is, during floods, when materials are taken and deposited to form an extensive land, they form floods. Then we also talked about the delta plane, that's where we say, we said that it is where rivers deposit materials at the mouth of the river. And I said the mouth of the river is where the river joins another water body or where the river ends. Then here, the picture here, we saw the delta here. And this is the Mediterranean Sea. That is the sea that divides Africa from Europe. So this is where the river now joining the Medi Sea. And so the deposition here form what we call delta because they are the mouth of the river. Then we also talked about the lacustrine. The lacustrine plain, where we said they are plains formed when lakes fill up. That is when they are deposition on a certain lake and the lake fills up, dries out, leaving an extensive land, it is known as the lacustrine plain. 
So these are some of the things that we talked about the other time. We're going to continue today with the rest of the depositional planes. After that, we look at the importance and the disadvantages of planes.